kids today we'll be talking about recent advances in the management of dyslipidemia to start with uh, just a word on the epidemiology of dyslipidemia it is clearly observed that in asia southeast asia and east asia dyslipidemia is a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease also to date statins remain the first choice of therapy as a lipid lowering drug because statins have clearly shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular events by lowering the ldl cholesterol so our talk would be mostly based on the guidelines that are given by european society of cardiology and european atherosclerosis society in 2019 and by acc aha in 2018 So we start with the recommendations that the experts have given regarding the investigation in patients and subjects to determine their risk for cardiovascular disease because of dyslipidemia. The experts clearly say that the total cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, the triglycerides and the non-HDL cholesterol it is to be measured in all the patients or subjects in which you are trying to determine the risk of cardiovascular events because of dyslipidemia. the role of apob and lipoprotein little a has been restricted to a few subjects like those with a history of premature atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or those patients who are having diabetes a very high level of triglycerides or those patients who are having a lower ldl cholesterol and still having some sort of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease so there are different scoring systems that have been suggested by different societies to determine the risk of you know dyslipidemia in cardiovascular events one such scoring system given by the european society of cardiology is the score or the score risk this risk score divides the european nations into high risk and low risk and similarly they have suggested scoring system for other countries of the world This score system uses simple parameters like the age, sex, the smoking status, the blood pressure and total cholesterol. Based on these simple parameters, they divide the patients or the subjects into four major groups which includes the very high risk group, the high risk group, the moderate risk group and the low risk group. The very high risk group are those patients or subjects who have a 10 year risk of having a cardiovascular event of more than 10% while the low risk group are those patients who have a 10 year risk of having a cardiovascular event less than 1%. So as I said it's a class 1 recommendation by the experts to measure any scoring system in patients or adults who are more than 40 years of age so that you can classify them into one of the groups and thereby determine uh, you know the therapy the whether it's a pharmacological intervention or non pharmacological intervention to correct their dyslipidemia in addition to it it's a class 2 recommendation by the experts that the patients who have a borderline risk you can use other parameters like arterial sonography that is usg or doppler ultrasound to determine whether there is plaque burden in the major arteries like the carotid or the femoral or you can go for coronary artery calcium score by ct So as I said, we based on the scoring system and other parameters, we divide the patients and the subjects into four major groups. So which are the which are the subgroup of patients that fall into different of these groups? Say very high risk group. This includes the patients who are having documented atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, which is either clinically you know proven or proven by imaging. It also includes patients with diabetes having target organ damage. patients with ckd and the egfr of less than 30 patients having a score that is a score calculated of more than 10% for 10 year of cardiovascular event risk and finally patients with familial hypercholesterolemia with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease which are the subgroup of patients that fa- fall into high risk group these are the patients who have markedly elevated levels of say total cholesterol ldl cholesterol or blood pressure these are the patients with familial hypercholesteremia but without atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease these are the patients with diabetes but without end organ damage patients with a ckd with egfr between 30 to 60 and finally a score between 5 to 10% the patients belonging to the moderate risk group they include younger patients with diabetes 
of less than 10 years of duration and a score risk between 1 to 5 percent. Finally, as I said, the lower risk group, it includes patients who are having the 10 year risk of cardiovascular event less than 1 percent as calculated by a scoring system. So the first duty or the first step would be to you know calculate the risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in a patient for that matter in an adult above 40 years of age. On the basis of his coding system you designate that patient or subject into either very high risk, high risk, moderate risk or low risk group. And based on this group the patient is designated to you can decide what and when to treat for primary or secondary prevention. Say for primary prevention, those patients who belong to the high risk group, their target to be achieved is the, the point at which we start the treatment is LDL cholesterol of more than 190. So if the patient is having say moderate risk and the LDL cholesterol is more than 190, we start a drug therapy in addition to uh, you know non-pharmacological interventions like dietary changes or physical exercise. For patients at high risk we start this therapy when the LDL cholesterol is more than say 120. For patients at very high risk we start this therapy when the LDL cholesterol is more than 70. So uh, this is how for primary prevention you can uh, you know designate a proper level at above which you are going to start the drug therapy in addition to the non-pharmacological interventions. So patient with moderate risk, you can go, uh, you can start the therapy when the levels are more than 190, for patients at high risk more than 120 and for patients uh, you know, at very high risk, you can start the drug therapy if the LDL cholesterol levels are more than 70. When you are talking for secondary prevention, the patients are at very high risk group, you know, in fact you should uh, target the LDL cholesterol levels to be lesser than 55. So this is really important. So first you classify the patients into high risk, very high risk, moderate risk, low risk and depending upon their LDL cholesterol level start treatment in addition to the pharmacotherapy in addition to the non-pharmacological measures like dietary changes and lifestyle changes. Now what do the experts believe in terms of use of lipid lowering agents? So it is clearly said that the experts believe that statin is still the first line of therapy to be used as a lipid lowering agent because this is the drug which has time again proven that it improves you know cardiovascular morbidity and mortality over a 10 year period so it is the first line of drug. If you are not able to achieve your LDL cholesterol goal in a particular subgroup of patient by using the maximum tolerable dose of statin you can add on azetamide. If despite the addition of statin and azetamib you are unable to achieve the goal you can add on PCSK9 inhibitor or finally a bile acid sequestrant. So this is how step wise you can go and remember statin remains the first choice of agent. Also you need to understand that what does highest intensity statin means. So for, say for rosewa statin 40 mg it acts as a high intensity statin and you know it reduces the LDL cholesterol by almost 65 percent if added with azetamide and alone it reduces the LDL cholesterol levels by almost 50 percent. So if you give a high intensity statin you expect the LDL cholesterol to be reduced by 50 percent and along with azetamide you expect the cholesterol to be reduced by 65 percent. Addition of a PCSK9 inhibitor with a high intensity statin reduces the LDL cholesterol by almost 85 percent. So just to uh, revise the newer concepts I think the level, the target level to be achieved has clearly been revised. Say in patients who are going for treatment for secondary prevention of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, the goal of LDL cholesterol has been clearly set below 55. For patients who are already on secondary prevention for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and experience a second event, in those patients the LDL cholesterol levels to be achieved have been kept below 40. For patients who are for put on primary prevention for say any high risk the LDL cholesterol target levels have been set 55 for patients at high risk not very high risk the target levels are 70 similarly the patients at moderate risk the target level to be achieved 100 and those with lower level the target level is almost 120. Now in addition to the proper pharmacotherapy which are the other uh, 
lifestyle and dietary changes that have been recommended by the experts that the latest guidelines both from ESC and ACCHA they said that the smoking should be stopped the dietary habits should be changed to a healthy diet you know you ha should have a regular physical activity of 3.5 to 7 hours per week the body weight should be kept the BMI between 20 to 25 the blood pressure should be kept below 140-90 the LDL cholesterol levels we have already discussed the non hdl cholesterol to be kept below 85 in patients who are at very high risk similarly an apob levels to be kept below 65 in patients who are at very high risk triglyceride level to be kept below 150 and finally if the patient is having diabetes hba1c level should be targeted below 7 so just to uh, revise uh, what all we have discussed whenever a patient or an adult about 40 years of age uh, comes to you a patient of, of course atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease we start with his risk estimation of a cardiovascular event for the next 10 years this risk estimation can be done by several scoring systems available on the internet by different societies one of the common scoring system used is SCORE or the score based on the score that the patient achieves he is designated into one of the four groups like very high risk high risk moderate risk or low risk Based on this group and the LDL cholesterol the patient has, the therapy is decided, the pharmacotherapy is decided along with dietary changes and lifestyle interventions. And based on those pharmacotherapy which is decided, the patient is given either a high intensity statin, moderate intensity statin. If the patient is given a very high intensity statin, we go up to the maximum tolerable dose of statin. If the LDL cholesterol goals are achieved, well and good. If the levels are not achieved, we add on azetamide. Similarly, if the levels are achieved with azetamide and statin, well and good. If the target levels are not, not achieved, we add on PCSK9 inhibitors or bile acid sequestrants. So this is how stepwise you approach a patient uh, with dyslipidemia in order to reduce their 10-year risk of cardiovascular events. It is to be noted that the levels, uh, you know, to add on therapy or to modify therapy, they are to be measured every four to six weeks. Now what about hypertriglyceridemia? It's clearly said if the triglyceride levels are more than 200, the patient needs to be treated and statin, is in, statin again is the first choice of therapy. Yes, despite statin, if the levels remain above 150, then you can add on phenofibrates and you can also add omega-3 polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids like eicosap and ethyl. So this is how again a stepwise approach to triglyceride is recommended by the experts. What about the treatment of dyslipidemia in uh, you know elderly population? Is there a change? Well, for secondary prevention, I think uh, the treatment recommended is same as that for younger adults. Yes, for primary prevention, patients who are younger than 75 years of age, the treatment is same as that of younger adults. But for patients who are quite elderly in their geriatric age group, that is more than 75, uh, or octogenarian, that is more than 75 years of age, in those uh, patient population, uh, you know, the primary prevention is given only for high risk and very high risk subgroup of patients. What about uh, the role of, uh, you know, diabetes? If the patient is having diabetes as a confounding factor, do the levels change? Yes, in diabetic patients with very high risk, we try to keep the target level of LDL cholesterol as 55. In the diabetic patients with high risk, we try to keep the LDL cholesterol level as 70. Also, it is to be noted that all the type 1 diabetic patients who are at high risk or very high risk also need to be given statin profile access, but not in those uh, female patients who are trying to plan pregnancy. What about the role of statin in patients undergoing PCI? So for patients undergoing PCI, statin is to be preloaded just like the antiplatelet therapy. So just as you load antiplatelet drugs, you need to load statins also. What about the role of statin in patients who are having ACS? Well, the patients who are having ACS, they are to be considered as patients of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease with very high risk. And hence, these patients are to be given high dose of statins, uh, you know, maximum intensity statin and the target level to be set as 55. Uh, also, you need to remember that if the target levels are not achieved in four to six weeks, uh, you can check in four to six or six to eight weeks, then you can add on ezetimibe, and finally, PCSK, 9 inhibitor in a stepwise fashion. The point to be noted <clears throat> here that 
there are many patients who can have statin intolerance uh, you know acute condition you need to take care that you have also checked their thyroid levels and the vitamin D levels what about patients with peripheral arterial disease we have lot of patients at our center coming with peripheral arterial disease again this acts as a uh, you know atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and on the basis of the LDL cholesterol levels they can again be divided into very high risk high risk patients and these patients also need to be given high intensity statin uh, along with ezetimibe or PCSK inhibitor SOS according to the target level achieved. Remember the target level in this group of patients is also less than 55 mg per deciliter for LDL cholesterol. For patients with both coronary as well as peripheral arterial disease, we also need to take care that if these patients are on secondary uh, prevention treatment therapy and despite the fact that they are on the therapy, they get a second cardiovascular event then their target level is reduced to 40 mg per deciliter. So you need to go still down in LDL cholesterol if the patients who are already on treatment uh, for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease get a second event. So just to summarize what we discussed, remember for the treatment of dyslipidemia as lipid lowering drugs, statin are the most effective and they are the most commonly used because time and again they have clearly shown to reduce the cardiovascular events in patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. The subjects and the patients which you are dealing with they need to be classified into some risk category according to different scoring systems that are available all over the world. One of the commonly used scoring system is the SCORE the scores which is recommended by the European Society of Cardiology and European Atherosclerosis Society. Once the patient has been designated a particular group, the treatment is decided on the basis of the group the patient belongs and whether you want to give a primary prevention or a secondary prevention therapy. The targets are also uh, you know, designated according to the group the patient belongs and whether or not he is having an atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So this is all from my side uh, for the recent advances that have been proposed by the society uh, that is ESC and ACC AHA 2020, uh, 2018. Uh, thank you all for your patient hearing and I would be really glad to answer any of the question if any of the participants is happy, ha having. Thank you all.